Everyone learns differently. Some are visual learners who retain information better with visual aids such as images, videos, and GIFs. Others prefer reading articles and help documents and onboarding materials in detail. That's obviously not me. To successfully onboard users with different learning preferences, you have to apply an education principle called self-directed learning. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you exactly how to do that with examples from popular apps. Hey friends, it's Ramley John from AppQs. If you wanna get the best user onboarding tips and tricks, be sure to smash the subscribe button. So what is self-directed learning? Self-directed learning, sometimes called self-discovery learning, is an approach to education wherein the learner takes the initiative and is responsible for learning a particular topic. Instead of merely memorizing tasks required to reach the current desired outcome, students explore possible solutions for themselves. Now the teacher's role changed from sage on the stage to more of a guide on the side, supporting students as they explore the world around them. So how can this be applied to user onboarding? Now the goal of user onboarding is the same for all users. You wanna help them find the value of your product so that they become happy, loyal, and paying customers. But the way you approach onboarding should start by taking the user's learning needs into consideration. Here are four strategies to implement the self-directed learning into your onboarding. First is build scaffolding to support users as they learn. We're all familiar with scaffolding in the context of construction. A series of poles and platforms designed to support builders and help them access areas that they wouldn't otherwise be able to reach. In teaching, scaffolding refers to a set of instructional techniques and tools used to guide students towards a better understanding of the concept being taught. In software, that scaffolding takes the form of knowledge center, documents, blog posts, and product lifecycle emails, sport chats, webinars, and more. By providing information when the user needs it in a variety of formats, instead of prescribing how that information should be consumed, users can piece together information together in a way that works best for them. A great example of scaffolding in practice is Asana's Quick Start Guide. While the guide walks users through the product step by step, they're also given the option to skip forward to a more advanced topics at any time. The guide also provides settings at the end to additional resources in a variety of formats, uh, ranging from Asana's community forum to short lessons and specific topics to the more extensive Asana Academy. Number two is create clear paths to completion and show progress. Human beings are motivated by a feeling of accomplishment. By giving users a list of tasks to complete, they feel like they're in control of their destiny. Completing those tasks gives users the feeling that they're accomplished, something challenging and rewarding. Giving users a sense of how far they've come in the onboarding sequence and how far they must still go can prevent users from abandoning your product altogether. Whether you use a progress bar or a series of number steps or a checklist of tasks, users are much more likely to complete your onboarding sequence if they feel as if they're making progress. A great example of this is Acorns, an automated investment app. Users are shown their account strength along with a progress bar to motivate them to reach 100% by completing the checklist items. Users feel a sense of accomplishment from checking items off their list. What they might not realize is that each item in the checklist corresponds to a key feature of the Acorns app. And completing all of these features increases the chances that a user will continue using the product. It's a win-win. Number three, pre-populate empty states with examples. As children, human beings, and just about every mammal for that matter, learn through active exploration. Even as adults, many people learn most effectively when left to their own device in a room full of learning opportunities. From a software perspective, that room full of opportunities can be your product, populating your tool with example data, giving users opportunity to explore at their own pace. By populating your empty states with examples, users are better able to visualize your product in use. This strategy also encourages learning by doing, which allows you to quickly show users the power of your product helping them reach their aha moment faster and increasing the likelihood that they'll stick around. Think Basecamp for example. After registering for a new account, users land on an example project page, showing examples of the company-wide announcements, team profiles, and projects. 
users can edit the project, adding new data or changing the example data until they're comfortable enough to move into their own project. It's a really great example. Number four is stop interrupting users with instructions and requirements. Letting go of the reins can be really hard. It's easy to feel like you need to do something to make sure students are learning. Teachers often ask questions about students' activities, steps they're taking to complete those activities, and why they are making certain decisions. When thinking too far, this can turn to micromanagement, interrupting their work and preventing them from achieving their goals. The same concept applies to user onboarding. Try to keep your onboarding as simple as possible. Fewer steps mean fewer opportunities for confusion. Even if your product has a lot of features and options to explore, presenting only the most critical elements of your product will help push users through the onboarding process and towards their realization of value much more quickly. An example of this is Blue Apron, a meal delivery service. They offer plenty of options when creating a new meal plan, but they keep their initial onboarding simple and only offer two options for a two-person plan or a family plan. While the two plans that are available for selection might not meet the needs of every user, having fewer options can actually increase the likelihood that people will convert to paying customers by limiting the anxiety of decision-making in the face of too many choices. Well, this offer now, which products have you seen incorporate self-directed learning principles into their onboarding? Also, if you found this video valuable, share it with your colleagues and friends, share the love. We've also created a free user onboarding certification course that details how to create an onboarding experience that turns more of your users into paying customers. We've got the link below in the description. Make sure to check it out. Don't forget to also subscribe to get the best tips and tricks to improve your products user onboarding. We got a bunch of other videos around this. Well, that's it for today. This is Rami John from AppCuse. See you in the next video.